I had a chance to catch up with Steve Merlot, who is the director and producer behind the brand new Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan film, The Sawyer Massacre. It seems both of us are avid fans of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, and we also have quite a few opinions on the rest of the series. Welcome back to ML Miller Frights, a part of the Kings of Horror Network. I'm ML Miller. I wanted to start out by reminding folks to give this video a like, share with your buddies across the electronic superhighway, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Please get the word out to new folks so we can make this channel bigger and better. Steve Merlot is directing and producing a Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan film called The Sawyer Massacre. There are a couple of days left for you to back this project on Indiegogo, and I'm going to provide the link down below as to how you can do that. I sat down with Steve for a little chat, and it went a little something like this. I wanted to welcome Steve Merlo. You are directing and producing a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan film. Tell me about yourself. Tell me uh, what's your what's your background and what what first got you into this whole project. Sure. Thanks for having me. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being here. Um, my background's actually actually in music more than anything else. I worked professionally as a live musician for quite a number of years, but filmmaking was always kind of a passion of mine. And it's just something I never did until I was in my 30s. <laughs> I'm 40 now. But yeah, in my early 30s, I started thinking more about getting into filmmaking. I met my wife when I was 32. And she said, do it. Just do it. I was <laughs> writing scripts. I had all kinds of stuff I was writing, but uh, wasn't doing anything with it. So it just occurred to me, maybe I should just try to do it myself. Never went to film school. There was a time I contemplated it but uh, just to learn more and stuff like that. But uh, through a lot of advice I, I got from people that went to film school, it's not really worth the price you pay. Or at least here, it's about $50,000, and you may as well make your own film for that much. <laughs> you know? Sure. Exactly. Sure. So. And, and where are you out of? Where, where, where are you? Uh, I'm in Western Canada in a little town called Kelowna. I shouldn't say little. It's kind of like a medium-sized town. It's a, it's a small town that's slowly becoming a big town. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's a, I mean, that's a great lead in. I, I'm wondering how, you, how are you making Canada look like Texas, I guess, <laughs> or, or is there, I, I've been there a few times, but I don't know if it's, it's exactly a, a Texas landscape. How, what, how are you? Uh, Depends on where you go. It? It okay. de definitely depends on where you go, but I should mention that our goal is to raise enough that we can actually film it in Texas, um, oh, okay. but we're still very, very far from that goal. I do still believe it's quite possible to hit that kind of a goal with our crowdfunding campaign uh, because we have a lot of time. We actually, we're not filming till next summer. This will just probably be the, be the first of two crowdfunding campaigns that we do. Uh, so we have lots of time, but we have to hit about 25K before I can even feasibly go to Texas. But that's very possible. And, you know, even that was is a, at a reduced cost simply because I've made some connections in Texas that have probably saved me around $10,000. Uh, so it, my Texas budget really would be about 35K, but, uh, but I can get it down to 25, luckily. But okay. long ways to go. We've only hit about 3K in our campaign so far, which is barely enough to even make the film. In fact, it, we can make it here and nobody's going to get paid, uh, is how that would <laughs> Why did you decide to start this endeavor as a, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan film? It was probably the very first idea I had as a, as a writer. Right after I, the uh, 2003 remake came out, it, I'll, I'll say this, I was very excited because I actually thought it was was going to be outstanding. I thought it was. I actually thought it was going to outdo the original when I saw the the TV spots and everything. It just really felt like you know they took it to the next level. And then when I saw the film, I, I was like first in line to go see that movie when you know with me and my buddy were there. Uh, 
it's hard to explain, but like the beginning of the film set those expectations even higher because I don't know what your feelings are, but the beginning of that film really set it up to be like super disturbing, super disturbing level, uh, mm-hmm. which was what made the original so great. It was really disturbing. It was scary and it was disturbing. And none of the sequels really did that for me. So I got that feeling right off the bat with that, with the, with the remake. And unfortunately, the rest of the film kind of let me down. Um, not, I w- won't say the whole film let me down, but a lot of elements of, of that film really let me down. And I just started to brainstorm in my head what I would do if I was doing it. And it t- took me all the way to this point where I'm at now, where I, you know, I finally had the script that, uh, you know, with a lot of help from uh, fellow writers in the industry, I finally got the script exactly where I want it where I know it needs to be, where it's not copying the original, but still has um, that disturbing element that I feel like all the other films are missing. Yeah. Um, but in a new way, because again, I don't want to copy the the original exactly, right? So it started yeah. there. It's, it started with that film, and that, that film is, the remake is now, what, 17 years old? <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, and we've had so a it's couple been a long more. journey. A couple more, even worse ones, have been along since oh, then. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I think you and I agree on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I always find something, something kind of cool in all of the sequels and remakes. But I, yeah. I agree, there, no one has kind of achieved that level of weirdness and just oddity. And it was as if you were transported to a completely different world. And, and these kids were as well um, in that film. So, so yeah, it's, it's awesome that you're able to recognize that and, and go for that in this film. Lately, there's been a lot of fan films that have been come out and they, they've been pretty big releases. I, I'm, there have been a couple of uh, Friday the 13th ones are actually coming out this month and a couple more that are, are in the, down the pipeline. And uh, I've seen a couple of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre ones. Have you seen those? I've seen a couple. Uh, I've seen a few Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan films. One of them I actually kind of liked. It's. I feel like it still needed more, but uh, at the same time, I could say, boy, I actually like that fan film. Uh, there's another one I saw recently suggested by another by a guy who who interviewed me on YouTube to go mm-hmm. see it. It looks very polished, and it looks like they had a bit of a budget for it, but uh, the story didn't get me at all, and it had, yeah. it had it actually had the biggest cop out ending I've ever seen. So I won't mention because uh, I don't want to I don't want to disrespect sure. people, but let's just say it had this really big cop out ending uh, that felt like they just didn't know what to do, so they said, "Okay, let's do this," and people will think it's cool. <laughs> and uh, uh, but yeah, to me that it was yeah. I could I, I'll mention the one that I actually liked though, because I've actually been uh, chatting with the director of that film. And he seems like a, a really nice guy, and he's he's from Texas, and they filmed their their short uh, film there in Texas, and that's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the last. Uh, I always forget the the name of this wrong. The last Roland Roundup Grill. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Go check that one out. It's pretty cool, actually. It's it was well done. It's got that gritty feel, mm-hmm. which I like. Yeah. It doesn't have the best acting. It, it feels like it needs a little bit more added to it, but at the same time, it, it's uh, it's got the feel. It had right. the right feel to it, and I think you know that's something that's been missing from a lot of these films, uh, from any film in the franchise, not just fan films, but the big studio productions seem to be not getting that right. You know, it's, yeah. yeah. The, what's the exact title of your your short or your film going to be? My film, which is not a short, by the way, it's a feature oh, length. Oh, it's going to be a feature? Oh, great. <laughs> it okay. will be a feature length. It's called The Sawyer Massacre. Can you give me a basis of the story, or is that under wraps? Uh, there's a synopsis online. I can, uh, okay. you know, because I'm not good at uh, memorizing these things. I'll uh, <laughs> see if I can get it up here and, and read it to you. Well, we don't want to spoil too much, but needless to say, there's a... Uh, there's some new layers to it, and it's a, it really is a totally different story. We didn't want to remake the original. We didn't want to feel like, you know, the same story with, you know, five kids in a van driving through Texas just happened to, you know, <laughs> stumble yeah, across yeah. this place. You know, I wanted to, I wanted it to feel a little bit different mm-hmm. and take it from a different perspective. So, so our summary is uh, while recovering, while recovering from the loss of someone close. Jimmy's friends bring him to the Texas countryside to escape city life. 
In need of supplies for their cabin, they ascend to a gas station where they are directed to find their supplies at an isolated farmhouse. The property is not as it seems. They find themselves hunted by a cannibalistic psychopath with an arsenal of violent tools at his disposal. In the end, any that do escape his clutches will wish they hadn't. So, cool. very cool. They get an and, idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, what to you uh, stands out in a in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film? Um, is there? I mean, obviously, chainsaws, cannibalism, <laughs> Leatherface, things like that. But um, there have been various other people approaching this sort of project, and some people have Leatherface as kind of like a lone person out there, just kind of doing his thing. Personally, I love the family aspect of of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I think that sets it apart from some of the other um, slasher movies. What, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I do like the family aspect of it. However, I I, I think I like them in certain doses. You know, our film is almost with with our film. I try to almost make you wonder who's actually a family member. You know, give add more mystique to it rather than uh, give everything away. You might even be like saying, boy, I wonder if that's the cook from the original or I wonder if that's the hitchhiker. You know, well, the hitchhiker might stick out a little bit more, but, you sure. know, you'll probably say, oh, that's definitely the hitchhiker. You know, anybody who's got a big birthmark on his face, it's got to be yeah. him, right? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, have that sort of idea like, ooh, I wonder if he's good or I wonder if he's bad, you know, that kind of thing. So it, it's they're all there, but uh, they're in, in certain doses. And again, I don't want to spoil anything. But uh, we'll say Leatherface has a relationship with one particular family member uh, that's uh, pretty strong. But I'll leave it at that. I won't tell you which family member it is. But uh, but it's uh, you, you definitely get a, a little bit of a, a, la- a new layer from Leatherface, I think, because of this. And I think it was neat. I think it, it's needed. It's subtle, but it's uh, it's needed to make sure that the uh, that it works with the original. I guess you could say that it's it's sure. not an origin story, but you get something added that uh, that'll you know work well with the original. I think because our film does act as I don't want to say prequel, but as a because uh, it, it takes place before the original. I guess a precursor or something like that to the original. Okay. Yeah. Great, great. And so, um, how did you go about casting this this film, or have you have you gone? I gone have, and done yeah, that? I have, okay. I've cast it in Texas, done my full okay. te- Texas cast. Other than the role of Grandpa, which I wanted to leave open just in case I could possibly, possibly get John Dugan to do it, because he did oh, the wow, voice, he did great. a voiceover for our trailer actually. Uh, if you have, if, so if you haven't seen our trailer, John Dugan is voicing a younger grandpa in our trailer, which is really cool because we've never heard John Dugan speak as grandpa before. So that was a pretty cool thing to have have him do. But he does have some obligations that sort of prevent him from being in the film, but I don't want to I want to still leave that uh, role open if I can. So I did cast every role in Texas uh, other than the role of grandpa. But, you know, uh, they're all, nobody's under contract at this point, so they, it could be subject subject to change, uh, especially if we don't have enough money to film in Texas. We might, I mean, we might have to film here in Canada, okay. which we do have some good spots in Canada that, that could act as Texas. Our trailer was filmed in Canada, so, and okay. a lot of people actually thought it was Texas, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 the trailer was really impressive. I really liked what what I saw there, and it, it it prompted me to kind of reach out to you and, and uh, want to talk because it, it definitely felt like a legit movie rather than uh, some of the other stuff that you, you sometimes see of just, you know, kids putting on masks and fighting in the backyard. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. got that style. But then you also have like the full on production, which is great to see. Um, it's I love the fact that fans are taking it into their own hands and kind of doing it themselves what kind of uh, legal things do you have to kind of watch in uh, making a, a film like this well i definitely can't make any money off of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that's sort of the big thing um which is okay with which you know i totally uh totally understand that you know realistically it's good to get the uh the right the rights holders permission I've reached out to them, but I uh, never never heard back. But um, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's good to at least try to get their permission. But you know, 
it's uh, nothing that's it's it's most likely not something that's going to come back to bite you legally, but uh, it could, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously, if we raise some, if we actually raise like a million dollars to make this film, we could probably hear <laughs> hear from from their legal department <laughs> that we're going to raise anywhere close to that, though. So. Well, you never know. Uh, but, you, never you know, know. Let's, let's, keep, uh, let's be hopeful so, for you. <laughs> so, I mean, anybody making a fan film that's that you want to make on a professional level, do at least try to reach out to the uh, to the uh, people that own the rights to the film. I made my attempt. I don't. I didn't hear back. But uh, you know, and they're making another one in Bulgaria right now. So uh, you know, they probably have their hands full, anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think of? Uh, have you heard? some of the news that's coming out of that that shoot at all or yeah i have yeah. It's, I, I you know it's it doesn't sound good to be honest with you it sounds like it's a studio made film and uh yeah 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 and it's not a filmmaker's vision and uh i mean even i almost wonder wonder on a lot of things like even the writer was he doesn't have that's his first screenwriting credit so mm-hmm. i almost wonder if it was just a a somebody depended on if it goes bad sort of thing you know it's uh who knows who yeah writing this script and i feel like they're they're just hired a filmmaker they can bully around and i don't know i could be wrong on that i really hope it's good you know i yeah, hope I it's a good film but because I'm, I'm i'm always rooting for every film that comes out in the franchise to actually be good but i you know i've been so disappointed so many times that uh you know i don't get my hopes hopes up and it doesn't sound like this one's going to be very good i honestly don't feel like a 60 year old leather face really is going to work but yeah. i don't know you never I mean, know. it 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 sort of worked in uh don't breathe and i guess it is fede alvarez uh doing that sort of thing where it's he has an older like an older villain um but at the same time um you're right i think that just from the small news we've heard out of Bulgaria, just that the firing of the original directors and the addition of the new director and um, and just the experience of some of the other people, it does seem like it's being put together as a response to the success of Halloween rather than a passion project like what you're doing. Um, it's too bad fans with talent like you that can't that actually understand the essence of, of those types of films don't get a shot to do that sort of thing. Um, is that your hopes coming out of this movie to maybe someday get a shot at doing this? That's always a good hope. You know, it's th- something to strive for. But at the end of the day, I, I w- at the end of the day with this film, I want to make the fans happy. And you know what? You're not going to make everybody happy because you know what? Every film in the franchise has its fan base. And I can honestly say I'm not going to try to please all those fans because <laughs> then I'll be s- sacrificing my vision. And sure. as as much as I know people love Chop Top from part two, mm-hmm. I hated him. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just you know, it's it's just a personal thing. And Chop yeah. Top has nothing to do with my film and and uh, those people that love Chop Top are gonna not want to watch my film. And that's fine. You know, it's uh it is what it is. You can't please everybody, but uh, I know that there's a, a strong fan base for what we're doing. Even some people I think that don't realize that this is going to be for them they're going to find out that it is them there's a a lot of people out there that love the original so much that they just can't stand to see new films being made because it it tarnishes uh the original my response to that is simply it doesn't really tarnish the original it tarnishes the franchise i guess it makes the franchise look bad and you know leatherface has kind of become a joke over the years it's like you know he's kind of more laughable now he than he was w- with the first movie because he you know he was so scary in the first one and just the sure. idea of Leatherface alone should be enough to to make something pretty scary but uh, he's kind of looked at as a joke now and I think people yeah. don't like that so they see any any time another film gets made it's another joke film and you know I'm not laughing and I'm not laughing yeah. either I truly want to bring back the scary Leatherface you know. Leatherface that, you know, we don't know where what his real motive truly is. You know, we know that he's a cannibal, but there's, needless to say, there's a bit of a reveal at the end of our film. Cool. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be subtle. So you're going to think you know what it is, but you, you might be able to, you, you might be able to think it's something else too. You know, if, if you're a positive mind thinker, you'll, <laughs> you'll think the positive rather than the negative, but you sure. know. <laughs> Well, um, so after you finish this Indiegogo campaign, you said that you might have a, another one 
further on down the line. Is that is that correct? Yeah, probably at the beginning of March. Okay. And what's like the schedule and the time frame um, as far as shooting the film, finishing the film, and and beyond? Well, if we have to shoot here in Canada, I'll have to shoot it in July of 2021. Okay. Um, because we need it hot enough to actually pass as Texas. And mm-hmm. believe it or not, we shot our trailer here in Canada in late September of 2019. Mm-hmm. So that uh, you know, around you know around this time, just to, you know, and it's not very hot. We we were applying fake sweat to everybody, <laughs> you know, in the color grading. They you know the, the guy that did the color grading really had to go for do things to make it look like it was hotter than it actually was. <laughs> and it worked. Hey, it worked. You know, it's uh, the things you can do with color grading, I guess. You sure. know, it's not my forte, mind you, but, uh, you know, but no, I, wa- I would have to shoot it in July just to get as much heat as possible. So that'll only give us a couple months of pre-production once once our, our second Indiegogo campaign is done. Uh, if the Indiegogo campaign goes well, though, we can actually uh, film in Texas. And uh, if we shoot in Texas, we're going to wait till September. So we have an extra couple months of uh, pre-production. Great, great. It sounds like a, a really interesting project. And I, and from just what I saw in the trailer, I definitely think that you have that eye uh, to actually sort of bring something new and also capture that old feel of, uh, of the original. Um, what was it like for you when you first uh, saw that, that first, the first time you ever saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Do you remember Ooh. that? <laughs> Well, when I was a little, like, really little kid, like, we're talking six or seven, I had just mm-hmm. seen, like, little clips, right? And they yeah. were enough to just freak the heck out of me, you know? It yeah. Just, I, I, I didn't want to see anymore. I didn't actually see the full film till I was about 12. Yeah, I think I saw, the first time I saw it was in Terror in the Isles, uh, where they had those tiny little clips in that movie. Did you ever see that movie, Terror in no, the Isles? No, I didn't. I didn't. It um, it basically just showed little clips of all kinds of just movies, and this was the oh, mid-80s. Okay. I think it's just being released on vi- video because they, they never had the rights to all of the different films to be released in one movie, and so it's just being released. They had a Leatherface section in there, or a Texas Chainsaw mm. Massacre section in there, and this was before even the sequel came out. And it was just, it just blew me away, and I knew that I had to see it. And I was way too young as well to, to see <laughs> yeah. that. But um, what was that like seeing it for the first time? You know, I didn't fully get it at, at the time, but I knew that there was something very disturbing about it, very real about it. And I think that was enough for me to say, boy, this is a, this is one heck of a film. Um, I didn't get get a lot of the subtle stuff. I don't think I fully understood the cannibalism aspect of it when I was twelve. It's something I had to to uh, to understand later, but you know, eventually did. And it just the more you actually understand about the film, about it being like a product of its time, and it actually having these reflections on the social climate of that time, uh, all the misery that was going on in the world at that time, the more you can actually appreciate that film for what it, all the subtle little messages it actually has in it about the world and, you know, about brainwashing, you know, the government brainwashing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's very strong when you look at it in that way. And, you know, I try to do little things like that with my script, but because our script isn't really, our film isn't going to be a product of its time, it takes place in the 60s, I had to find some parallels. And there's mm-hmm. a couple good parallels I was able to find with that time period, with our time period, obviously with COVID-19. This is a pretty sure. significant, uh, even though I wrote the script before COVID-19 even hit, yeah. it wasn't hard for me to go back to it and actually find little things that make sense with it, you know? Definitely. You're kind of a part of the way on your way to reach the goal right now. What do you want to tell people to get out and support you guys? Well, right now we're just $125 off of our minimum goal, uh, and that's Canadian dollars. So it's under, a, I think it's under $100 American is what that would come to. Uh, just okay. off of our minimum goal, that is, um, for making the film. With that, you know, it's it's a low production value, though. I want to keep that in mind. The more money we raise, the more money we can put into production value. You know, good actors, good special effects, um, good props. You know, we want to have old cars in this, you know. You know, at, at, but at our budget right now, you know, finding cars from, you know, pre-60s uh, is going to be a little bit tough. We can find old sure. vehicles, obviously, and 
make it look okay. And some people are okay with that. I mean, geez, even the remake had a lot of stuff like that. The remake had a, <laughs> a 90s, he was using a 90s chainsaw and that, you know, not even close to the time period, but, uh, but you know, nobody notices that kind of stuff. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not essential, but you know, I'd like to be able to do that. You know, I'd like to have a fifties chainsaw in, in this. I, I've even found one online that is like really awesome. But, you know, we've got a 70s chainsaw if we have to use use that. So, I mean, I'd rather not. I'd rather use the 50s chainsaw. The more money we raise, the more money we can put into doing that kind of stuff. Cool. It's all icing on the cake at this point, as far as I'm concerned. And if we somehow get to that $25,000 mark, then we're going to Texas. And who doesn't want to see a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film actually filmed in Texas? I know I do. I yeah. can't believe they're shooting in Bulgaria. Uh, so all I can say is help <laughs> us get there, you know, help it, us get, get to that point, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely think that um, if you're looking for the type of Texas Chainsaw Massacre that, that you want to see, you got to go to these fan films because that's where the passion lies, I think. Um, and exactly. so I wish you the the best of luck with this project. I really think that um, from what I've seen so far, it looks fantastic. And uh, I just, Hopefully I can get the word out to some of my viewers to actually come in, donate, try try to help back you guys and help get this thing made. It, it seems like a really great thing. And, and you seem like a person, the, the person to do it, too, is you have a lot of passion oh, behind thanks. it. So, so yeah, I, yeah, I'll never claim to be the best filmmaker out there or anything. But I do believe that I'm, I'm the right person to make a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. And I can't explain it. I, I don't know if I can convince anybody but i do have a vision that's going to be disturbing and i want people to remember that word because it hasn't happened for 46 years now Mm -hmm. a disturbing texas chainsaw massacre film and i i can promise that i can do that that's the one thing i can promise (laughs) that's awesome well well thank you so much for doing this interview with me i really appreciate you taking the time to do it and uh yeah best of luck to you and it's called what what's the title of it and where can we sawyer massacre you can find it on uh, facebook instagram twitter uh follow us on all the all that social media stuff you can follow my youtube channel steve merlo uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah, I'm all, we're on all that stuff. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Mark. Be sure to check down below for links to Steve Merlot's YouTube page, his Facebook and Twitter pages for the Sawyer Massacre, as well as a link to the Indiegogo page for the Sawyer Massacre. I really want to thank Steve for taking the time to talk with me, and I wish him all the luck in the world on this Indiegogo. It looks like a really cool project, and I hope people will back it. That'll be it for today. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button. Share this video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. Don't forget I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks for you to look for. Grave Trancers is out right now, and Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, will be out in late November, early December, Diamond Order Code APR201712. And be sure to subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thanks so much for your time, and take care. You're doomed. You're meant to be Stuck inside your reality You're